This weekend's project is converting this old garden shed into a functional chicken coop. I'm going to show you all the pieces required, how to install them, and how much it costs. If you're new to my channel, the reason why we're needing to create a new chicken coop is because we just moved. We just moved to a new 240 acre homestead here in the north woods of Minnesota, and we left my beautiful coop behind. We were at a five acre homestead. We called it the poultry palace. We will definitely be building a new poultry palace in the future, but we just don't have the bandwidth to do it just yet. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the epic building of Poultry Palace number two in the future. So I'm gonna work on seven essential things. Paint isn't necessarily essential, but we want it to look nice. This place definitely needs a little facelift. We're also gonna add some ventilation. Right now it is sealed up tight. We need to make sure that that moisture can escape. We're also gonna add some light. There are no windows in here, and as the days get shorter, light is important for those chickens. We're also gonna add a door right now I'm having to manually open the door every day and if we happen to leave for the weekend that's not going to be very functional and here in the north woods of Minnesota insulation is key we can often hit negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll definitely want to work on insulating the coop lastly there's the roosting bars and the nesting boxes let's dive in So for paint, I can just pick it up at my local feed store. And so I went with a satin exterior. It comes with a paint and primer. And as far as my two colors, I'm doing Churchill Downs for the main coupe color. And the trim color is Gentle Lamb. And then for ventilation, we're using these dryer exhaust vent covers. And for the windows, we're gonna use a few things. We have the half inch hardware mesh. We're gonna be trimming it out with one by two pine. And lastly, using this polycarbonate sheet on the inside for the winter. And I'm a huge fan of automatic chicken doors. I went with this Chick Cozy door. It fit really well for the space that I have. It's also really high quality and it should work well with our cold winters. And then here on the bottom is our insulation. This is one and a half inch styrofoam board. I know it's probably not the most eco-friendly choice, but when you send your husband to Menards, <laughs> this is what he chooses because it's cheap. We'll give it a try. I am a hair concerned that the chickens are gonna peck at this. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. And if I'm noticing them pecking away at it, I'll definitely add some thin sheeting on top. I'll have all of these items linked in the show notes. So you can definitely check it out if you're wanting to make a similar coop. Now that you have an overall view of what we're gonna be doing, let's go ahead and jump in. A lot of the existing paint is starting to flake off. So I'm just gonna use this old wire brush that I actually found in the garden shed to knock some of the old paint off. <laughs> Welcome to day two of our chicken coop overhaul. It's looking pretty good already. I spent pretty much the entire day yesterday prepping and painting. It took a lot longer than I was anticipating, like with most things. I ended up doing two coats of paint for the green and two coats of paint for the trim. Probably could use a third coat. I'll get around to that at a different time. So today's focus is gonna be on those functional pieces. So getting the ventilation holes in, the windows in, and hopefully also installing the coop door. We'll see how much we get 
you done. So for windows, I was a little more limited on my options. You can see the roof slopes down like this. So I could technically put windows down there, but I like them a little higher up. It's just a little too tempting for predators when they're down low. So right here on the door is my best bet. You can see I already cut one of them. So we're gonna do two different windows. I'll walk you through this one here. And I think that's gonna work well. They'll let some light into the space and also improve that ventilation. So how we're gonna start the process is of course measuring out our space. So I'm gonna be doing a 12 by 16 inch window. Next, we're gonna chop it out. Now that our holes are cut, we need to do a few more steps. So next what I'm gonna be doing is cutting some hardware mesh. This is half inch. It's very strong, so it's gonna add some stability to the structure and also it's just way more predator proof than your just basic chicken wire or screen-like material. At our old coop, we did have some just window screens and a hawk actually flew through it. So. Hardware mesh really is the way to go. And the reason why I'm doing hardware mesh and not just doing the polycarbonate for a permanent window is in the summertime, the sun's gonna hit it and it's gonna bake like a greenhouse in there. So I don't want that, the polycarbonate windows in the summertime. So we're gonna make that part removable and then the hardware mesh is gonna stay there all the time and provide really good ventilation in the summer. Next, you need to decide what size of hardware mesh you want to use. So my trim that I'm gonna be putting around the outside is one and a half inch thick. So I went with a one inch extra around the edge. My window size is 12 by 16, so I cut a 14 by 18. Next, we're gonna just tack it on with our staple gun. This is just gonna temporarily hold it in place until we have the trim on. So now let's trim out that window. I have my trim pieces cut. Again, I'm using one by two pine lumber, pretty basic stuff. And we're gonna be securing it with one and a quarter drywall screws. So we're just gonna be putting these on one at a time. And as tempting as it would be to screw it in just from the outside, we don't wanna do that with this type of material. It's not very strong, so it's best for us to screw from the back side. So I like to start by putting my screws in halfway and then we're gonna finish it up here. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the inside. I'm just gonna go along. So our top piece is gonna be the widest. So I'm gonna put those screws in the corner just enough. We don't wanna go all the way through just yet. And then the two side pieces are gonna be below it. And then these side pieces are gonna extend down. So I'm gonna do this in the corner and then the other corner for this one. And then this bottom piece is gonna be short, our 12 incher. Okay, let's start getting our pieces on here. So for this top one, just kind of eyeball it. I just have to keep reminding myself, it is a chicken coop. We are not doing my lovely kitchen someday. So, you know, just do your best, eyeball it. If it's not great, you can come back. So that looks pretty good to me. And I am lining up the edge of the trim with the edge that we cut. So I'm just gonna go on the back side now, holding this in place. I'm gonna go back and make sure nothing moved. Next, we're gonna do our side piece. So I wanna line it up so my edges of my trim look nice and professional. Make sure this side didn't move. So the third and fourth pieces, I just kinda like to hold up and kinda custom fit. So that looks good there. So I'm gonna pull this one out and screw this side piece in. Hopefully I can reach. A little tricky. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and fit that bottom piece again. Make sure that everything is lining up okay. All right, so hold that in place. Hey, look at that. I like it when it can hold itself. Oh, almost. Okay, we wanna make sure that our bottoms are nice and even. Still looks pretty good. And that looks great. So I'm just gonna have to go back and paint this trim so it'll match the white here. 
Now ventilation is a key piece that you absolutely don't want to forget about because chickens, they create a lot of moisture. They're breathing at night and exhaling all that moisture. Plus they poop a lot too. And so ventilation is not only just going to let those toxic fumes escape, but in the winter time, we want that moisture to escape because that is a recipe for frostbite if it builds up in the coop. I like these dryer vents because it's going to keep rain from coming into the coop. It works pretty darn well. It's going to keep critters from coming in and it's easy to install. All we're going to do is cut a four inch hole and plop it in. One other important thing to note is that it has this flapper piece. We don't want that. We want it to be open all the time. So I'm just going to remove that. So as far as where these ventilation holes are going to go, you want them higher up in the coop because heat rises. So the fumes are going to come out. The moisture is going to come out if they're high. So on my sides, that's not a great option for me since it's low down. We're definitely not going to be popping holes in the roof. The front, we already have these for good ventilation. And even when we have the polycarbonate on it, it will ventilate since I'm going to leave a gap at the top. So that leads us to the inside here on the back wall. The best place is going to be right at the top. You can see where I already kind of started my pilot holes that I'm going to access from the back side. Now it's not exactly ideal because my roosting bars are here. And so you don't want a bunch of cold drafts to be falling on their birds at night. But I think with the laundry vent design, it's not going to be too bad. I'll keep an eye on it. But I think ultimately moisture is a bigger issue than having a little bit of cold air coming in. Now I'm going to use this four inch hole saw to cut my hole. Now before we go popping in this dryer vent, it's important to add a little bit of silicone. This is going to help weatherproof it so that the water doesn't come in. Now we just pop it in and screw it in place. Now those should really work great. Thankfully, the roof is in good shape or good enough, so we don't need to do any work here. Our next steps is installing the automatic chicken door. It's definitely not absolutely necessary, but it's going to make everything a whole lot easier for us. With this setup, they're only going to be able to get outside manually. So if we're gone for the weekend or even just want to sleep in, they're just stuck inside. So I love an auto door so that I really don't have to worry about it. And as far as which automatic door to choose, there's a lot of different ones on the market. I personally chose the Chick Cozy one because it's going to fit my space really well. Some of them go horizontal and I've actually used one in the past that was horizontal. It was the Omelette Auto Door. That one's also great. It just and I still own it, it just wasn't gonna fit in this space. And if you have a similar setup and you'd like this Chick Cozy door, I'll make sure to link it in the show notes. And that is my affiliate link if you're willing to shop through it. I so appreciate it. So a new update on this door project. It has certainly evolved. You gotta love these old structure projects. There's always something that you don't expect. So I was originally planning on putting it on the left because the handle is here. So I was gonna be accessing this door. But as I was getting ready to install it on this left side, I noticed, let's get it open here, that there is some water damage here and it was kind of soft in some of these areas. So I didn't want to install the door here. So I was like, okay, that's fine. We'll do it on the right side and then I'll just switch the handle and we'll put the handle on the other side. No big deal. Nard had already measured this side to make sure that the door fits. Turns out the doors are not the same size. This side is at least an inch smaller so the doors as they were exp expanding were hitting the trim section so now i already have a hole so what i've been doing is adding a spacer along the outside and then we're going to install the door and then the door flaps should be able to extend over the trim all right let's give it a go please work hooray it worked 
ladies are coming over to inspect the new door. So a couple other tidbits about it that I really thought would make it a great fit for this space is that it is battery operated, which has its pros and cons. But for me, this is a moving operating door. I didn't want cords everywhere, so that's awesome. You just put the batteries there in the side. They last about six months. It'll alarm or let you know the battery life. So you'll want to keep an eye on it. If you're gonna go on a trip for the weekend or whatever, definitely double check your battery life. The last thing you want is to leave and then have it run out of batteries and they're stuck either out or in. Now for the roosting bars, I highly recommend two by fours if you have cold winters like I do. And that's because the chickens will be able to lay their foot flat on here and put their feathers over their feet so you don't end up with frostbitten toes. When I first started with chickens, I followed the advice out of my chicken book and used two by twos. I had a lot of frostbitten toes. So two by fours are essential and make sure you're sanding off the edges. So as far as the actual setup of the roosting bars go, I like to do a ladder method because that'll give the chickens a chance to get up there first and then keep working their way up. You'll notice that they definitely prefer the top one, but if I had them both this height, some might make it up there, but not all of them, especially those heavier breeds. And then making sure that they're spaced enough that the top ones don't poop on the lower ones. And I'm fortunate that there were already these cross bracing pieces, so it was just really easy to plug them in. But once we add the insulation, I'll just need to make sure to notch around that. So that should be easy. The other thing going on here is there is, was already these boards here and the chickens are enjoying roosting on there, but it is getting full of poop. I've been using a scraper tool trying to clean it up but ultimately I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to pull this off. It's just going to be too much of a mess and then once winter hits it's going to freeze on there. So yeah I'm going to remove that and just leave the roosting bars. There's one over here too so it must have been a shelf for the previous owner. Who knows. And for the nesting boxes, I didn't have to do much. I already owned this best nest box rollout nest, which I absolutely love. And it's what we were using in our poultry palace. So we were able to bring it with us. And all you need to do is just screw it into the wall and you're ready to go. I love this rollout nest because it keeps the eggs clean. It keeps the chickens from eating the eggs. It keeps them from anything else eating the eggs. So if you're having rats in the coop or snakes or anything like that, they're not gonna be able to get it in this protective tray. So we've done a lot of things here. We've installed the automatic chicken door. We've put in the summer windows for some good airflow and sunshine getting in there. We've installed the roosting bars, the nesting boxes. If you're wanting more information on nesting boxes, I actually have an extensive blog post that talks about some sizing and information you should consider when making your own and if you don't want to make your own there's a lot of pre-made options that I also have listed out and reviewed so I'll make sure to link that blog post in the show notes let's see what else have we done we've added the ventilation as well to let the moisture escape the coop so the only things we haven't added yet is the polycarbonate so the plastic sheeting that's going to block some of that ventilation for the winter time because we don't want it to get too drafty and we haven't added the insulation yet so I think what I'm going to do is split this into two videos making video number two winterizing the coop because I know for a lot of you if you live in the south this is probably all you need to do which is awesome but if you're in the north like me this is not going to be enough once those cold temperatures set in so stay tuned for video number two about winterizing your coop so that's where we'll be installing the insulation putting the full winter windows on and then I do have a few other extra steps that I do so it'd be nice to kind of pack all of that together so make sure to subscribe my channel so you don't miss that winterizing the coop step in this cooper mod might end up being quite an epic series. We have two other big steps that are coming. So we're going to be moving this coop. This coop is actually right by our cabin, which is right there in our outhouse, which is right there. We don't necessarily want the chickens right outside our bedroom window. So one video, if you guys are interested, it could be all about how to move a structure like this. And then the other thing that's coming down the chute is a run. So you'll notice this is just a freestanding coop. We've been using electric poultry netting around it to protect the birds temporarily, but that's not a great long-term solution. So we will be making a covered run to provide them some protected outdoor space, especially if we're gone on the weekends. So let me know in the comments which ones you wanna see the most so I can make sure to prioritize that. And that could be really fun. Thanks for being here along the way on our chicken coop remodeling project. It's really turning 
turning out pretty good so far. We might need to replace a couple of those rotting boards, but the ladies sure are loving it. Mm -hmm. 